Hello, this is Kevin from Woodworks Technical Support. This video is titled Significant Changes to US Sizer 11. The US Woodworks Design Office Suite has recently been updated to conform with the NDS 2015, IBC 2015, ASC 710, and SPIDWIS 2015. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Design Office Suite, it consists of three separate programs, Sizer, Connections, and Shearwalls. Sizer can be utilized to complete gravity load design, Connections can be utilized to complete the design of the typical fasteners included in the NDS, and shear walls, which is a lateral load design tool. Shear walls can be utilized to complete the design of, or complete the lateral load design of light frame wood structures up to six stories in height. This video will only touch on significant changes which have occurred to the Sizer program since the previous version. Within Sizer, there are three separate modes, concept, beam, and column mode. Concept mode, can be utilized to create a gravity load model of your structure up to six stories in height. You can specify columns, walls, beams, and floor joists, add point, area, or line loads. Sizer will automatically distribute these loads between members and down the structure utilizing the tributary area method. Concept mode will create preliminary design results for each member, which you can refine further in beam or column mode. It's possible to transfer a member directly from concept mode into beam and column mode. All the information related to the details, or the resulting details, and the loads will be transferred into beam or column mode. Alternatively, if you want to complete the design of a single beam or column, instead of making it a model of your structure, you can navigate directly to beam or column mode and design a member there. Just a reminder that for key codes and sales related questions, to please email sales at woodworks-software.com. For technical questions related to the software, please email support at woodworks-software.com. These emails and information can also be found in the help menu under the About Woodworks Sizer button. Quick outline of this presentation. Start by going over features related to calculating unsupported length LU. We'll discuss new features related to calculating CL for built up beams. Look at new features related to notches, new material databases. Then finally, a demonstration of new features. So if we'll start off by discussing some design settings. If you click the settings button in the main menu screen and then navigate to the design tab, you'll see there is a section devoted to lateral stability factor CL, which we'll discuss further now. There are two options in this location of the design settings. We'll start by going over a feature which was available in the previous version. Unsupported length LU for CL factor, NDS 3.3.3.4, ends at point of zero, points of zero moment. By default, this feature is not toggled, meaning that LU is calculated based on points of support, but we give you the option of calculating LU based on points of zero moment instead. So let's just highlight the NDS clause 3.3.3.4, which gives guidance on how to calculate LU for a beam. So we'll zoom in. Where the depth of a bending member exceeds the breadth, D is greater than B, lateral support shall be provided at points of bearing to prevent rotation. When such lateral support is provided at points of bearing, but no additional lateral support is provided throughout the length of the bending member, the unsupported length, LU, is the distance between such points of end bearing or the length of a cantilever. When, bending, when a bending member is provided with lateral support to prevent rotation at intermediate points, as well as at the ends, the unsupported length, LU, is the distance between such points of intermediate lateral support. So what we're dealing with here is features related to how we calculate LU. Just to be clear, LU is uh, used to calculate LE, which is then used to calculate the slenderness ratio RB, which affects the resulting CL factor applied to a beam's uh, bending moment resistance. When designing a beam in beam mode, if you specify the material type as beam, the default setting of the program is to assume lateral support at the top and bottom of the beam at points of support. If you specify a floor or joist or roof joist, since sheathing is fastened to the tops of the members, the default lateral support spacing is to provide full lateral support along the top and support at the bottom at the supports or points of bearing. It's worth mentioning that you can always specify an exact lateral support spacing. For instance, if, you, if there were 
a beam supporting a floor joist system spaced at 16 inches on center you may want to specify an exact support spacing on top of the beam as it will affect the calculations for CL. The next few slides I'll be discussing how the unsupported length LU uh, feature works and in each case we'll be looking at lateral support when, when we'll be looking at it, the case where lateral support is only provided at these supports or points of bearing. Starting with a simply supported beam that is 8 feet long with a uniformly distributed dead and live load. As you can see in the bending moment diagram at the top of the screen, the beam sees positive bending moment only. If you do not have the unsupported length LU feature toggled, LU will, equal, will be equal to 8 feet, as that is the distance between supports. Although, in this situation, since the distance between points of zero moment is also 8 feet, due to the loading, toggling the feature unsupported length LU for CL factor ends at points of zero moment will not create any difference in the calculation for LU and it will also be equal to 8 feet. So in this case toggling the feature does not have any effect on the overall CL calculations. Let's move on to a more complicated example. If instead of a single span you have two span continuous beam that has two 8 foot segments. Once again assuming uniformly distributed dead and live load. Take note of the new bending moment diagram. Because the beam is continuous over two spans, this creates a negative bending zone around the center support. In this case, the, if the unsupported length LU feature is not toggled, for both positive and negative bending, the length LU will be taken as 8 feet, as that is the distance between points of bearing or points of support. Now, looking at the same example, but now we will toggle the unsupported length LU for CL factor ends at points of zero moment feature. You'll notice a difference in the LU for positive and negative bending. In the case of the positive bending, the member length LU is taken as the distance between the end support and the point of zero moment along the length of the first span. So about seven feet, about, about seven feet. Then for the negative bending, the length LU is taken as the length between zero moments for the negative side of the bending moment diagram. So in this case, it would be two feet. This feature is not toggled by default, but if you want to utilize the feature, all you need to do is toggle the feature in the settings design tab. All right, now we're going to discuss the other feature related to lateral stability factor CL. Feature allows you to specify whether to calculate built-up member lateral stability based on a single ply or the full width of the member. If you click on the size or new features files available in your C folder for the software, you can read all the details about the new features which were added to Sizer 11. In the case of this feature, there is some background. Research has recently shown that nailed and bolted beams have at most 30% composite action effect in terms of resisting torsional buckling. And for this reason, it is extremely non-conservative to use the full member width as B in the expression for the slenderness ratio RB, which is used to calculate the stability factor CL. This research has not yet been published, but a feature has been added to the program to now allow you to calculate CL based on a single ply instead of the full width of the member Ultimately, you as the user need to decide whether or not to utilize the full width or a single ply for the design of your built-up beam. You may wish to toggle the calculation to utilize the full width if you're confident the construction details of your built-up beam will ensure full composite action. This may be achievable by specifying a combination of glue and closely spaced fasteners. By default, to be conservative, this feature is set to, to toggle lateral stability or to calculate lateral stability using a single ply width but you can always modify and set the setting as you desire. Let's look at an example. An eight foot long three ply two by eight built up beam consisting of number one and number two SBF. If you were to calculate CL based on a single ply, the resulting CL would be 0 0.761. The information related to the lateral stability calculations will automatically be reported for you in the design results. Although, if you were to utilize the full width of the member for calculating lateral stability, the CL would result as one. So 
using the single ply as opposed to the full width of the member is slightly conservative. Just want to mention some updates to the notch design. In the past, it was only possible to input notches at the support uh, or at end, uh, end supports. But now, if you have a multi-span bean, you can specify a notch at the interior supports. And we'll go over an example when we get into the demonstration. The limitations uh, for the size of the interior notches for solid sawn beams is provided in Figure 4A of the NDS 2015. Take note that for that the program follows the limitation that no notches are permitted in the tension zone when the width B is greater than three and a half inches. All right, new material databases. I just want to mention that we now include material databases for beams and columns for Nordic Structures laminated wood products. Once you install the software, you will automatically see Nordic LAM available for design in the material drop-down list. Also, it is worth mentioning that Nordic has a custom version of Sizer, which is catered towards all of their engineered wood products, including cross-laminated timber. You can go to nordic.ca to download the custom version of the program. All right, now for a short demonstration of the program. All right, so I've already opened Sizer 11. Uh, instead of uh, doing a uh, concept mode model, we're just going to do a single member design in beam mode. So we'll navigate right to beam mode. Uh, beam input view. We'll start by uh, adding in uh, span lengths. We're going to design a two-span continuous beam uh, that consists of two eight-foot segments. We'll leave uh, the span type as design span. Uh, we're not going to add any cantilever or pitch or oblique angles. We'll leave all those as is. We'll leave the type as a, a beam. For the material, we'll switch to lumber end ply, SBF species, number one, number two, two by eight, and we'll also specify the number of plies. You could leave some of these parameters as unknown and let the program iterate to a solution for you. But uh, in this case, we're just going to specify exact details. As you can see, uh, when I toggled the lumber end ply material, the repetitive member factor uh, automatically became toggled. Turn this off if you desire. But uh, if the member does indeed, if the built-up member does indeed consist of more than, uh, than two, three or more members, the repetitive member factor will be applied when calculating a uh, bending moment resistance. Deflection limits we'll leave as is. Same with modification factors. Uh, as we specified a beam type, the lateral support spacing was automatically pre-populated for us, so we only provide lateral support at the tops and bottoms of the beams at the support. We'll leave this as is. For uh, bearing design, uh, you have the option of specifying exact bearing details for each individual uh, support, but in the, this case we'll just leave it as all supports. We'll change the type to a wall, lumber stud, SBF, change the grade to number one, number two, and uh, in this case we'll specify the exact uh, bearing detail. We'll say they're all supported by a uh, typical two by four uh, wall. So we'll now move on to uh, uh, the load input view. Here we'll add a 75 uniform uh, line load of 75 PLF. We'll add a 300 PLF live load. We'll include self-weight in the analysis as well as pattern loading. And we'll calculate a long-term deflection following NDS 3.5.2. So we'll run the design. Here you have a summary of all the loads which were applied, so the dead and live load, which I applied manually, as well as the self-weight. And then here you have your, uh, your uh, bearing design calculations. Scroll down a little more. Oh, we have a nice summary of uh, what the member consists of. And here you can see that I have a warning because I'm violating the bending criteria. You scroll down to the analysis versus allowable stress and deflection. You can see here that I, uh, for negative bending, I am just, we're just failing the uh, design by 1%. So we'll need to go in and uh, change the details of our design. So in this particular case, I'm using the default settings. So I'm calculating LU based on points of support. So in both, for both positive and negative bending, where it's uh, LU is equal to eight feet. And this, uh, and currently I'm using a single ply width when calculating uh, CL. So in this particular case, this results in a CL of 0.761 for the member. 
Now if we were to go into the settings, design tab, and change this to unsupported length LU for CL factor ends at points of zero moment. Instead of uh, calculating LU based on points of support, we should see a difference uh, when we run the design. And as you can see now, after rerunning the design, LU for positive um, um, moment was uh, about seven feet and LU for uh, negative moment is two feet. If again, we go back into the uh, settings tab and we toggle and go to the design tab and click uh, full member width instead of a single ply. See, this is already, made, already toggled for you. But if we rerun the design, you'll see that in fact the CL is equal to one. So that information is not even reported for you. So back to uh, beam input. If you wanted to, you could uh, specify a notch detail. So we'll do a left end notch. So we're only gonna add a notch on the end here. And we're gonna make it a, a top notch for now that has a depth of two and width and unsupported length of two. So if you run the design, oh, it says it's giving you a warning, NDS 5.4.5 notch depth exceeds one quarter of the depth. Okay, so you can see it's warning me of the invalid notch depth that I've input. And you can see that the shear analysis is not actually being done uh, because of this. So we specify a detail that will actually work. So probably one inch, rerun the design. You can see that now the shear analysis is done and that warning didn't pop up warning me uh, that I was exceeding the notch details. But because of the location of the notch and the size, uh, there isn't actually any uh, shear reduction applied to it. And uh, if we were to go back in and change it to a bottom notch with the same details, see it automatically changed down here, run the design. And in this case, CN is equal to 0 0.64. So we do have a reduction in the uh, shear resistance in this case. So thank you for listening. I just want to remind people that if you click on the help menu, you can go to the About Woodwork Sizer, you can find the uh, information for contacting us. So for sales and key codes, please email sales at woodworks-software.com. And for technical questions, please contact uh, support at woodworks-software.com. Once again, thanks for listening.